uh, integrals such as integral e to the x cos x dx, integral e to the x sine x dx, and sine log x dx. These are some examples that you may have um, seen so far. Now, the special thing about these integrals is that once you integrate it, you end up with the same integral again after integrating it again. That may sound like a mouthful, but what it simply means is that after integrating twice, you end up with the same integral, in which case you can sort of solve an equation to end up with the integral as an expression. So we'll have a look at this example to illustrate the process required or involved. So i equals the integral of e to the x cos x dx, where i is just representative of the integral. So we're going to integrate by parts, integrating e to the x and differentiating cos of x. So we integrate first, so e to the x, integral e to the x is e to the x. We leave second, cos of x remains as it is. And we take away the integral of e to the x, which is e to the x, times the derivative of cos of x, which is minus sine x. Remember, you've got to swap the signs. And of course, we have to add a constant. At this point here, we simplify it out, and we have i equals e to the x cos x plus the integral of e to the x sine x dx plus a constant c1 say. Now, looking at this, you don't see any immediate relationship between the integral of e to the x cos x dx and the integral of e to the x sine x dx. However, upon integrating again, of course, at this point I should mention that we're going to integrate e to the x again and we're going to differentiate sine x in this case, because doing so, because integrating sine of x will get us exactly back, um, will get us back to where we were before, and we really don't want to go back there. So we're going to integrate e to the x again. So a general rule, integrate one thing, choose one thing to integrate, and integrate that one thing only. So if you want to integrate the trigonometric functions, then integrate that, those trigonometric functions throughout the whole thing. In this case, we're integrating e to the x, since e to the x is a bit easy to integrate. So integrating e to the x gives us e to the x times sine x, we leave sine x, then we take away the integral of e to the x, which is e to the x, times the derivative of sine x, which in this case is cos x dx, and then we add our constant c2 so. Obviously, rearranging and simplifying gives us this expression here after taking out e to the x from e to the x cos x plus e to the x sine x. Now, recall that this integral here is equivalent to i. So we replace this integral by i. Not that, this is an important step. And we're going to let c2 plus c1 be another constant, say c0. This is simply to make working out a bit easier. Now, at this point, you'll see that we end up with an equation here. Now, if you don't see a difference in sign here, then you're going to have the i's cancelling out. So that means you made a mistake somewhere. Make sure that you have different signs here. This is a checking point to make sure that you have the correct answer. So you bring the i back over to this side, which gives us 2i equals e to the x cos x plus sine x plus c0, where c0 is a constant. And then we divide through by 2, which gives us a half e to the x cos x plus sine x plus a constant k, where I've let k equals c0 on 2. Now, this method here has allowed us to find i, which is the integral of e to the x cos x dx.